Welcome and bienvenue to Duolingo Audio Lessons. My name is Estelle. And I'm Paul. Bonjour. In these lessons, we'll practice speaking French with a focus on words and phrases that you can use right away. And you can do these lessons anywhere. In fact, you won't even have to look at your phone. You could listen while doing the laundry or the dishes. Or on your train ride home. Just find a place that works for you. Fantastique! Let's get started. Bonjour, Paul. Bonjour, Estelle. What are we up to today? We're going to practice some French greetings. Let's say you're walking along Les Champs Elysees in Paris. Taxi! Taxi! And you see a friend. You might say something you heard us use just a moment ago. Bonjour. Bonjour. The first part, bon, means good. And the second part, jour, means day. So, good day. Right. In French, bonjour usually means good morning or good afternoon. In fact, let's listen to some uses of bonjour on the streets of Paris. Bonjour, Louis. Bonjour, Patricia. You'll already notice there's a lot going on in terms of pronunciation here. And one thing French is kind of famous for is its nasal sounds. Like the on in bon. Exactly. Bon in bonjour is spelled B-O-N. But you don't pronounce that O-N the way you would in English. In fact, the N isn't really pronounced at all. Instead, practice saying O like the letter O in English but purse your lips. Almost like you're blowing a kiss and send air through your mouth and your nose at the same time. Mm. Oh. And here comes the first speaking exercise. Wait for the bell and then repeat after Paul. Bon. Great. Now let's add the second part. Jour. Notice how the J in bonjour sounds a lot like the middle of the English word measure? Je. Je. Bonjour. And the R at the end of jour doesn't really sound like an English R. You should feel that R in your throat. Jour. Yeah, almost like you're gargling or clearing your throat. Jour. Time for another speaking exercise. Put everything together and repeat after Paul. Jour. Bonjour. Très bien. So, are we ready to say good morning or good afternoon in Paris? Totally ready. And how about nighttime? We'll get to that in the next lesson. Can't wait. In lesson one, we learned how to say Bonjour, which means good morning or good afternoon. And what happens if it's nighttime? For that, we'd need to say Bonsoir. Bonsoir. We already know how to pronounce the first part, bon, because it's the same in bonjour. And the second part is soir. That means evening. Soir. The end sound is kind of like saying ah at the dentist. Ah, soir. But soir also ends in r. So we've got that really light gargling in the throat again. Soir. Soir. Good. Now it's your turn. Soir. Excellent. And now we're ready to put bon and soir together to say good evening. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Let's hear it from some other French speakers. Bonsoir. 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 Bonsoir, Elsa. Your turn again. Repeat after Paul. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. 
Très bien. Now we have two French expressions in our pocket for the streets of Paris. Bonjour and bonsoir. And in the next lesson, we'll learn to say goodbye. See you then. Welcome back. In the last lesson, we learned how to say bonsoir. Which means good evening. And before that, we learned how to say good morning or good day. Bonjour. We practice these two words as greetings, but you can also use bonsoir to say goodbye. Exactly. Just make sure it's in the evening. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Madame Maton. But the most common way to say goodbye in French, regardless of the time of day, is au revoir. Au revoir. Let's break it down because there are actually two separate words here. Au and revoir. We'll start with the second. Revoir. 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 Re. At the beginning means again. And voir means see. So, see again. Yep. Re starts with that French r we've come to know and love. Re. And voir is easy because it rhymes with soir, like in bonsoir, soir, voir. Okay, now you give it a try. Repeat after Paul. Revoir. Bravo! So we have revoir. That's the second word in au revoir. How about that first word? Right. O. For this word, round your lips like you're saying the English letter O, but keep them rounded the whole time. Don't relax at the end how we normally do in English. Try to hear the difference between an English O, O, versus the French O. O. The O in au revoir is spelt A-U, and here it means until. So if revoir means see again, and au means until, then au revoir is like saying until we see each other again, or more simply, goodbye. Nice. Can we put it all together? Absolutely. Repeat after Paul. Au revoir. Great! Notice how when French speakers say au revoir quickly, it can sound like one word. Au revoir. Au revoir, Hélène. Au revoir. So, in the past few lessons, we've learned bonjour, bonsoir, and au revoir. But that's not all. We learned about nasal sounds like un in bon. Bon. And we practice the French R at the end of bonjour, bonsoir, revoir. At the beginning of revoir, too. And the je sound in bonjour, je, jour. Wow, that's a lot. It is. You can practice these words and other ways to say hello and goodbye in the greeting skill of the French course. That's a great idea. We look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Until then, au revoir. Bonjour, Estelle. Bonjour, Paul. So we've already learned two French greetings. The first was bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, madame. Of course, bonjour means good morning or good afternoon. And the second was... Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Anna. Bonsoir, Thomas. Right, bonsoir, which means good evening. And finally, we learned how to say goodbye. Yep, au revoir. Au revoir, Hélène. 
Au revoir, Marc. Let's do a speaking exercise to review. Repeat after Estelle. Bonjour. Bonsoir. Au revoir. Super. These are great ways to greet people in Paris. But what if you want to say more than that? What if you need to ask a question while traveling? Maybe find the train station or the subway? Or even more important... What's that? The bathroom. Right, right. Très important. Yes, très important. Very important. Let's start with something else you might want to ask about, like le métro. Ah, yes, the subway. Uh-huh, le métro. Le métro. Le here just means the. Le métro. Le métro. Yep, and the French R is in the middle of métro, so it sounds like you're clearing your throat. Ro. Métro. Métro. Excellent. Now, let's plug le métro into something useful, like Où est le métro? Où est le métro? Exactly. Où est le métro? And that means, where is the subway? Yep. We can definitely hear le métro. Uh-huh. And at the beginning, you're hearing où, or where. Où. Où. Où est. Where is. Où est. Good. Où est. Let's try speaking again. Repeat after Estelle. Où. Et. Où est. Parfait. Now, let's put it together. Où est le métro? Où est le métro? Le métro. Le métro. Où est le métro? Où est le métro? Nice. Now you give it a try. Repeat after Estelle. Le métro. Où est? Où est le métro? Très bien. Okay, so où est means where is. That's really useful. You can ask about a lot of other things with that phrase. Including people, like où est Estelle? Of course, but what if we still need to ask where the bathrooms are? Well, we'll get to that in the next lesson. Last time we talked about a really useful phrase, où est, and that means where is. For example, we asked, où est le métro? Which means, where is the subway? Où est le métro? Où est le métro? And you can ask about a lot of other things with that phrase, like, où est le bus? Uh-huh. Le bus is the bus. So, où est le bus means, where is the bus? Le bus. Le bus. Où est le bus? Où est le bus? Now you try. Repeat after Estelle. Le bus. Où est? Où est le bus? Excellent. With où est, you can ask about practically anything. You can. Like, où est le café? Good. Où est le café? Where is the café? And, où est le zoo? Uh-huh. Où est le zoo? Where is the zoo? 
Où est le zoo? Now you try. Repeat after Estelle. Où est le café? Où est le zoo? Hmm, that didn't sound quite right. Try again. Repeat after Estelle. Où est le zoo? Fantastique! And of course, you can ask about people as well. Like, où est Estelle? Uh-huh. Or, où est Paul? Okay, but we haven't gotten to the most important question yet. Where's the bathroom? Oh, right. <laughs> In French, it's more common to hear where are the bathrooms. There's an S at the end of the word for bathrooms, even though you don't pronounce it. Toilette. Toilette. Perfect. We're hearing the same ah sound that we hear in croissant, or at the end of bonsoir, quoi, soir, toi, toilette. Toi. Toilette. Toilette. And because toilette is plural, We use les instead of le, but they both still mean the. Les. Les. Les toilettes. Les toilettes. Okay, give that a try. Repeat after Estelle. Les. Les toilettes. Super. Now, let's ask the full question. Before, we said où est for where is. But since toilette, like bathrooms, is plural, we need to say where are instead. Oh, right. Where are the bathrooms? Uh-huh. So that would be où sont. Où sont. Right. Où sont. 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 Sont is nasal, so it rhymes with bon, like at the beginning of bonjour. Où sont? Où sont? Où sont les toilettes? Où sont les toilettes? Les toilettes? Les toilettes. Où sont les toilettes? Où sont les toilettes? Nice. Okay, your turn. Les toilettes. Où sont? sont les toilettes Bravo Now we can ask where is Où est Où est le métro Where is the subway And what about Où est Paul <laughs> Where is Paul We also learned where are Où sont Uh-huh Où sont And finally Où sont les toilettes? Où sont les toilettes? Bonjour, où sont les toilettes? Excusez-moi, où sont les toilettes? Okay, that's all for now, but in the next lesson, we'll practice asking and answering these questions. Can't wait. Bonjour, Estelle. Bonjour, Paul. In that last lesson, we learned to ask something very important. We did? Oui, très important. And what was that? Where are the bathrooms? Où sont les toilettes? Bonjour, où sont les toilettes? Excusez-moi, où sont les toilettes? Où sont, of course, means where are. And les toilettes is the bathrooms. Now you try. Repeat after Estelle. Où sont? Les toilettes. Où sont les toilettes? Super! And in the lesson before that, we learned to ask about a lot of other things. Like, où est le métro? Très bien. Where is the subway? Also, où est le bus? 
Le bus. Where is the bus? Où est le café? Le café. Where is the café? Où est le zoo? Where is the zoo? And what about où est Paul? Exactly. Where is Paul? Now let's practice some longer exchanges. Let's say you need to answer one of these questions. Of course. For now, we'll practice with ici, which means here. Ici. Ici. So if I say le café est ici, that means... The café is here. Of course. Et ici. Et ici. Le café est ici. Le café est ici. Now you try. Repeat after Estelle. Et. Ici. Et ici. Le café est ici. Fantastique! Now let's listen to some other French speakers. Bonjour, monsieur. Où est le café? Bonjour. Le café est ici. Merci. There was a new word in there. Did you hear it? Merci. That's right. Merci means thank you. Merci. Merci. Merci has a French R in the middle. So we have to use our throat a bit. Mère. 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 Merci. Merci. You give it a shot. Repeat after Estelle. Mère. Merci. Excellent. And now, let's listen to a different exchange. Excusez-moi, où sont les toilettes? Les toilettes sont ici. Ah, merci. This time, the answer was about bathrooms. So instead of « est », like in « le café est ici », we heard « sont », which means « are » instead of « is ». Les toilettes sont ici. Exactly. Sont ici. Sont ici. Où sont les toilettes? Les toilettes sont ici. Les toilettes sont ici. You try. Repeat after Estelle. Ici. Sont ici. Les toilettes sont ici. Très bien. Now you can understand both halves of the conversation. Questions and answers. Très important. Bonsoir, monsieur. Où sont les toilettes? Bonsoir, les toilettes sont ici. Merci. Excusez-moi, madame, où est le métro Le métro est ici. Merci, bonsoir. So now we've learned how to use a and son to talk about where things are located, as well as ici. Which means here. And we learned to say thank you. Merci. Wow, that's a lot of French. And you'll learn even more in the next lesson. Au revoir, Paul. Au revoir, Estelle. So, previously, we learned how to ask a very important question. Où sont les toilettes? That's right. Where are the bathrooms? Où sont les toilettes? And we learned one possible answer to this question. Les toilettes sont ici. Yes, the bathrooms are here. But what if the bathrooms are not ici, but somewhere else? Well, in that case, we could use là, which means there. So, in English, we have here. Or ici in French. And there. Or là. So, let's say we're explaining where to find the subway. Le métro est là. The subway is there. Or the bathrooms. Les toilettes sont là. 
The bathrooms are there. Okay, are you ready to hit the streets and hear some French speakers? Let's go. Où sont les toilettes? Les toilettes sont là. Ah, merci. Au revoir. Now you try it. Repeat after me. La. Sont là. Les toilettes sont là. Le métro est là. Parfait. Okay, but if a person tells us that the bathrooms are here, ici, or there, là, that probably means they're standing right next to them, right? Right, and that's a little unlikely, or at least a little strange. Something you're more likely to hear is... Les toilettes sont à droite. The bathrooms are on the right. This new phrase, à droite, means on the right. But the literal translation is actually at right. That's right. A means at, and droite means right. A droite. Notice that in droite, we're hearing the same oa sound as in toilette. Toilette. Droite. And make sure you're pronouncing the t sound at the end of droite. Ready to give it a go? Repeat after me. Droite. À droite. Le métro est à droite. That didn't sound quite right. Try again. Repeat after Estelle. Le métro est à droite. Give that one more try. Repeat after Estelle. Le métro est à droite. Excellent. Now let's hear some conversations with more specific directions. Bonjour, monsieur. Où sont les toilettes? Les toilettes sont à droite. Bonjour. Où est le métro? Le métro est là. Là? Là, à droite. Ah, merci. Did you catch that? The woman asked for directions to the subway. Yes, she asked, Où est le métro? The man's response was, Le métro est là. But là wasn't very helpful. So to be more specific, he added, Là, à droite. Which means there, on the right. Exactly. So, there's one problem. What's that? What if the subway is on the left? That's not a problem at all. In that case, you would say, le métro est à gauche. À gauche means on the left. À gauche. À gauche. Notice that the O sound in gauche is the same as in au revoir, or in the English word, story. O. O. Gauche. It's kind of like the English word gosh, but with the O sound from story. Gauche. Let's listen to another conversation from the streets of Paris. Bonjour, monsieur. Où est le métro? Le métro est là, à gauche. Merci, monsieur. Au revoir. Now it's your turn to practice. Repeat after me. Gauche. À gauche. Le métro est à gauche.
Bravo! So now we know how to ask where things are located. Right. We can say où est to ask where something is. Like où est le métro or où est le café. But if we want to ask about more than one thing, we'd use où sont. Où sont les toilettes? And remember the difference between le and les? Yes, just like with est and son, we use le when we're talking about one thing, like le métro, and we use les with more than one thing, like les toilettes. We also know how to talk about where things are located. In addition to ici, which means here, we can say là, or there. And of course, to be a little more specific when giving directions, we can say à droite, which means on the right, and à gauche, which means on the left. We've learned so much. Yes, and most importantly, we'll always know where to find the bathrooms. Oui, <laughs> très important. You can practice all of this and discover other ways to talk about your surroundings in the next city skill in our French course. We'll see you again soon for a new lesson. But for now, let's say... Au revoir! Bonjour, Paul. Bonjour, Estelle. Welcome back. Merci. Let's start by reviewing how to ask something très important when traveling. Ah, où sont les toilettes? Where are the bathrooms? Bonsoir, monsieur. Où sont les toilettes? Bonsoir. Les toilettes sont ici. Merci. Remember that in French, you'd normally ask where are the bathrooms, not where is the bathroom. But let's say we did want to ask about just one thing, maybe the subway. We'd start with où est instead of où sont. Où est le métro? Or maybe où est le café? Où est le café? Le café est ici. Merci. Au revoir. Though, ideally, you wouldn't just walk up to someone on the street and startle them with a question like that. You'd try to be polite and get their attention first. In English, I'd say, excuse me. Exactly. And in French, you've probably heard something similar. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. Moi is French for me. So, excusez-moi literally means excuse me. And the sound moi is similar to the beginning sound in toilette. Toi. Moi. Moi. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi, où est le café? Excusez-moi, où est le café? Or, excusez-moi, où sont les toilettes? Let's hear a couple French speakers using excusez-moi to ask polite questions. Excusez-moi, où sont les toilettes? Les toilettes sont ici. Excusez-moi, où est le café? Le café est ici. Merci, au revoir. Your turn. Repeat after me. Excusez. Moi. Excusez-moi. Très bien. But if a French speaker is in a hurry, maybe they really need to find a bathroom, for example, you might not always hear the X sound at the beginning of excusez-moi. That's true. Instead of excusez-moi, you're more likely to hear something like excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. Check it out. Excusez-moi, madame. Où est le métro? Le métro est ici. Ah, merci. Excusez-moi can also be used to get a server's attention in a restaurant. Excusez-moi. Oui, monsieur. Of course, we oui here means yes. Oui. 
oui. You're likely to hear oui in response to excusez-moi. Okay, so I've gotten the server's attention. Now what? Well, then you order. For example, you could say un café. We know that un café means a coffee shop, but it also means a coffee. Un café. Un café. Uh huh. Un café. But it would be extra polite to add please at the end. S'il vous plaît. That means please. Un café, s'il vous plaît. Excusez-moi. Oui, monsieur. Un café, s'il vous plaît. Excusez-moi. Oui. Où est le cinéma, s'il vous plaît? Let's start with the first part of s'il vous plaît. S'il. S'il. S'il vous. S'il vous. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. But when speakers are in a hurry, that L sound at the end often gets left off. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Now you practice. Repeat after me. Vous. S'il vous. S'il vous plaît. Très bien. So we've learned how to say excuse me. Excusez-moi, which can be used to politely get someone's attention. And we learned a common response to excusez-moi. Oui. Finally, we learned to say please. S'il vous plaît. Now let's practice one more time. Repeat after me. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi, où sont les toilettes? Excusez-moi, où sont les toilettes, s'il vous plaît? Great. In the next lesson, we'll talk more about French you can use in a restaurant. Bonjour, Estelle. Bonjour, Paul. Today we'll be practicing a question that's especially useful in casual conversation. And that is, how are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> good to know, Estelle. But let's try that in French this time. How are you is, comment ça va? Comment ça va? Comment ça va? Let's hear a few examples of comment ça va in the streets of Paris. Comment ça va? Bonjour Elsa, comment ça va? Thomas? Hey, Marc! Comment ça va? Let's break it down. The first word, comment, means how. Comment. Comment. Comment ends in the nasal sound, en. To pronounce that sound, first say ah while dropping your jaw a bit. At the same time, try not to push air through your nose. See if you can feel the difference between ah, ah, and en, en. Ah, en. Now, the whole word. Comment. Comment. Now you practice. Repeat after me. Mon. That didn't sound quite right. Try again. Repeat after Estelle. Mon. Comment. Excellent. And now, let's focus on the second part of comment ça va, and that is... Ça va. Oui, ça va. Comment ça va. Comment ça va? Ça va literally means it goes or it's going. So when we say comment ça va, we're saying how does it go or how's it going. 
Comment ça va, Paul? Comment ça va, Estelle? Now it's your turn to practice. Repeat after me. Ça va. Comment? Comment ça va? Super! Now let's practice answering that question. To respond, you can say, Ça va bien. Exactly. Ça va bien. Bien means well, and we just learned that ça va means it's going. So, ça va bien means it's going well. That's right. Ça va bien. Comment ça va, Estelle? Ça va bien. You might have noticed that bien also has a nasal sound. Ah. Bien. Ça va bien. Ça va bien. Give it a try and repeat after me. Bien. Ça va bien. Parfait! Now that we've learned how to ask how someone is doing, and also how to respond to that same question, let's hear some examples of this French in use. Bonjour, Sophie! Bonjour! Comment ça va? Ça va bien! Ah, bonjour, Louis! Bonjour, Marie! Comment ça va? Ça va bien, merci! Notice how the last speaker added merci. Ça va bien, merci! You can add merci to any situation where you'd normally say thank you in English. That's right. Okay, now what? Next up, we're going to practice more casual ways to ask how someone is doing. But we'll do that in the next lesson. Last time, we learned how to ask, how are you, in French. Comment ça va? And also how to answer that question. For example, ça va bien, merci. Bonjour, comment ça va? Ça va bien, merci. Okay, but doesn't it feel like we're leaving the other person hanging a little if we only say ça va bien? Totally. In English, you'd probably reciprocate by saying something like, I'm good, how are you? That's right. Well, don't worry. It's easy enough to do this in French too. You can just add et vous at the end. Et vous? Et vous? E means and, and vous means you. So, et vous means... And you? Right. And to say, I'm doing well, thank you, and you, we'd say... Ça va bien, merci. Et vous? Bonjour, monsieur. Comment ça va? Ça va bien. Merci. Et vous? Ça va bien. Merci. Okay. Now you try. Repeat after me. Vous. Et vous. Ça va bien. Et vous? Excellent! One thing we haven't mentioned yet is that vous is actually the formal way of saying you. Ah, good point. You wouldn't use vous to talk to someone you know really well, like your sister or a friend. Instead, you'd use vous to address people you want to show respect to, like teachers or someone you don't know all that well, like maybe a receptionist at a hotel. But if we want to be more casual, we'd use et toi instead of et vous. Toi still means you, but you can use it when talking to people you're closer to, like a friend. Toi. Toi. It sounds similar to the beginning of toilette. Toi. Toilette. That's right. Toi. So if you're talking to a friend instead of ça va bien et vous, you could say... Ça va bien. Et toi? Give it a try. Repeat after me. Toi. Et toi? Ça va bien. Et toi? Excellent. 
Excellent. Okay, there's another way to make this conversation more casual. Are you ready? Hit me. We could also replace bonjour with salut. Ah oui. Salut. Salut means both hello and goodbye, but it's definitely more casual than bonjour or au revoir. And you can say salut at any time of day, morning or evening. Salut Estelle. Salut Paul. Salut ends with the French sound U. 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 Yeah, that's very French. <laughs> oui. To make this sound salut, say I, I, but pucker your lips. U. U. I. U. U. Lu. Lu. Salut. Parfait. Let's practice. Repeat after me. Lu. Hmm, that didn't sound quite right. Try again. Repeat after Estelle. Lu. Give that one more try. Repeat after Estelle. Lu. Let's keep going for now. Salut. Salut, Paul. Excellent. Now here's the final tip. When French speakers want a quicker and more casual way to ask how someone's doing, instead of comment ça va, they might just say ça va? Ça va? All by itself? Yep, ça va? It still means how are you? Just make sure your voice rises a little at the end so it sounds like a question. Ça va? Ça va? Let's hear some examples of ça va used between friends. Salut, Elsa. Ça va? Ça va bien, Thomas. Et toi? Ça va bien. Merci. Sophie, ça va? Salut, Thomas. Ça va bien. Et toi? Ça va bien. Great. We've now learned three ways to be more casual when chatting with friends. The first was toi. That's the informal way of saying vous or you. Yep. Toi, like at the beginning of toilette. We also learned salut, which means hello or goodbye. And finally, we learned that you can say ça va instead of comment ça va to ask how someone's doing. It's just quicker and more casual. In the next lesson, we'll learn a few new ways to say goodbye, like see you soon and see you tomorrow. Comment ça va, Estelle? Ça va bien. Et toi? Ça va bien, merci. Last time we practiced these new ways to greet people we know well. Yep, like friends or family. Now that we've got that down, let's look at another casual way to say goodbye. We already know that au revoir means goodbye and that salut can mean both hello and goodbye. Uh-huh. But what if instead of goodbye, we wanted to say something more like, see you soon? Right. In that case, you'd use a bientôt. A bientôt. A bientôt. Let's break it down. A at the beginning means until, and the second part, bientôt, starts with a word we already know. Bien. Bientôt. Bien. Bien. Bientôt. To means soon. So, a bientôt means until soon. Or, see you soon. À bientôt, Marc. À bientôt, Louis. À bientôt, Madame Mouret. À bientôt, Sophie. Okay, now you try. Repeat after me. Bien. Bientôt. À bientôt. Si 
super. So, à bientôt means see you soon. What if I wanted to say see you tomorrow? Easy peasy. You'd start by saying ah again. Which we know in this context means until. But then, instead of bientôt, you'd add demain. À demain. À demain. Demain means tomorrow. So, à demain means see you tomorrow. Yep, à bientôt. And à demain. See you tomorrow. The ending of demain sounds a lot like the ending of bien. Demain. Bien. Demain. Now you practice. Repeat after me. Ma. Demain. À demain. Great job. Now that we've learned a few ways to greet friends and family, let's listen to an exchange between two people who are trying to be more formal or respectful. Bonsoir, Madame Mouret. Comment ça va? Bonsoir, Louis. Ça va bien, merci. Et vous? Ça va bien, merci. Au revoir. Au revoir, Madame Mouret. And now, here's a similar conversation between two close friends. Salut, Elsa. Ça va? Salut. Bien, merci. Et toi? Ça va bien. À demain. Oui, à demain. Okay, à demain and à bientôt are great. But let's say you want to be super specific about when you'll see that person again. Let's say you have plans on Saturday or samedi. 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 Remember we learned see you tomorrow and see you soon. À demain and à bientôt. So how do you think we would say see you Saturday? À samedi. À samedi. Of course, spoken language gets messy, so instead of à samedi, you're more likely to hear a French speaker say à samedi. It means the same thing. À samedi. À samedi. See you Saturday. À samedi. Now let's practice this more common pronunciation. Repeat after me. Samedi. À samedi. Excellent. So in the last few lessons, we learned how to say salut, which is a casual way of saying hello or goodbye. We also learned how to ask how someone is doing. Comment ça va? Or just, ça va? And we learned how to respond to that question. For example, by saying, ça va bien, merci. Et toi? And finally, we learned à bientôt, or see you soon. À demain. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, see you Saturday. À samedi. Or, when pronounced a little quicker, à samedi. Let's hear some French speakers, shall we? Salut Thomas. Ah, salut Sophie. Comment ça va? Ça va bien, merci. Et toi? Ça va bien. À bientôt, Marie. Oui, à samedi. Ah oui, à samedi. Amazing. You're now all set to have a short conversation with a friend in French. And next time, we'll add even more to that conversation. In this lesson, we're going to practice chatting with a friend. Yes, we already know a lot of things to say in a casual conversation. To help you remember everything we've learned, let's listen to some French speakers. Salut, Elsa. Ça va? Salut. Bien, merci. Et toi? Ça va bien. À demain. Oui, à demain. Okay, are you ready to use your new French skills? Imagine you're walking around your neighborhood, à Paris, and you run into a good friend, Thomas. Thomas waves. He comes over to you and says, Salut! Say, hello, Thomas, in French.
Parfait. Salut Thomas. So after you and Tuma say hello to each other, what could you say next? Well, I would probably ask him how he's doing. Great idea. Ask Tuma, how are you, in French. Fantastique. After Tuma responds and asks you the same question, tell him, I'm good, thanks. Ça va bien, et toi? Excellent. Ça va bien, merci. Okay. You have a quick chat with Thomas, and now it's time to say goodbye. After Thomas says goodbye, say, See you soon, in French. Au revoir. Fantastique. À bientôt. But let's say, during your conversation, you actually made plans to get lunch with Thomas on Saturday. So this time, when Thomas says goodbye, say, see you Saturday. Au revoir. Très bien. À samedi. Well done. You've learned some very important phrases to use in a casual conversation and you're one step closer to having an entire conversation in French. Bonjour, Paul. Bonjour, Estelle. Ça va? Ça va bien, merci. Today we'll learn how to introduce yourself to someone. In case you want to make new friends. Exactly. Of course, you already know my name is Estelle, but to introduce myself in French, I'd say, Je m'appelle Estelle. Oui, and I would say, Je m'appelle Paul. Let's hear that again. Je m'appelle Estelle. Je, at the beginning, means I. Je, as in, je voudrais un café. I would like a coffee. That's right. The second part, m'appelle, has two words. Me, which means me or myself. Me. And appel, which literally means call. Appel. Right. So when you put it together, you get, I call myself. Je m'appelle. This is how the French say, my name is. Notice how it blends together. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Let's practice. Repeat after me. Je. M'appelle. Je m'appelle. Super! After introducing yourself, you probably want to know your new friend's name. For that, you'd say, Je m'appelle Estelle, and then ask, Et toi? Je m'appelle Paul. Et toi? We've used et toi before, like when we learned how to say, Ça va bien, et toi? That's right. Et toi means, and you? It's useful in a lot of conversations. Remember that toi is a more informal, friendly way of saying you. If you are in a formal situation, you need to use vous. Et vous? Et vous? Let's hear et toi and et vous from other French speakers. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Sophie. Et toi? Je m'appelle Marc. Bonjour, je m'appelle Marie Mouret. Et vous? Bonjour, Madame Mouret. Je m'appelle Louis Bourdon. Your turn again. Repeat after me. Et toi? Je m'appelle Paul. Et toi? Bravo! And let's say the other person does tell you their name. 
you'd probably want to respond with something like, Nice to meet you. In French, you'd say, Enchanté. Enchanté. That literally means enchanted. Yes, enchanté is a way to tell another person that you are delighted to meet them. And everyone is always delighted to meet me. <laughs> oui, Paul. Whatever you say. Bonjour. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Elsa. Et vous? Enchanté, Elsa. Je m'appelle Louis. Enchanté, Louis. Ready for more practice? Repeat after me. En. Chant. Enchanté. Très bien. Now that we know how to introduce ourselves. For example, je m'appelle Paul. And how to ask for the other person's name. By adding a vous or a toi at the end. And finally, how to say that we are delighted to meet them. Enchanté. We can now move on to other questions in French. Like asking where someone's from or what their job is. And for that, we'll see you in the next lesson. Last time, we learned how to say, my name is, in French. Je m'appelle. And nice to meet you. Enchanté. Bonsoir. Je m'appelle Thomas. Et toi Enchanté. Je m'appelle Sophie. Once you've introduced yourself, you might get a follow-up question like, where are you from? Right. In English, you'd say something like, I am from France. In French, you'll say, je suis français. We already know that je means I. Yeah, like in je m'appelle. And the next word in je suis française, suis, means am, as in I am. Let's hear that again. Je suis. Je suis. I am. Je suis français. Je suis français. Je suis français. Okay, time to practice. Repeat after me. Je suis... Français. Je suis français. Excellent. You might remember that French nouns can be masculine or feminine. And that's the reason we'd say, for example, un café, but une pizza. We use un for masculine nouns like café, but une for feminine nouns like pizza. Yeah, and this also applies when you're talking about people. So, as a woman, I wouldn't actually say, je suis français. Right, because français is masculine. Instead, I'd say, Française. Française. Notice the change in the pronunciation. Française. Je suis française. But I'm a man, so I'd say français. Je suis français. Française. Français. Je suis française. Je suis français. Now let's hear it on the streets of Paris. Je m'appelle Marc. Je suis français. Je m'appelle Marie. Je suis française. Je suis français. Je suis française. Your turn. Let's practice the masculine form, français. Repeat after me. Français. Je suis français. Magnifique. Now let's practice the feminine form. This time, repeat after me. Says. Française. Je suis française.
Fantastique. Let's add some other nationalities. Let's say you're from England. If you were a man, you'd say, Je suis anglais. I am English. Je suis anglais. Notice how the ending of anglais is very similar to français. Both are masculine, and although they both end with an S, you don't pronounce it. So an Englishman would use anglais, but an English woman would say anglaise. Je suis anglaise. Anglaise. Notice how you do pronounce the S in that case. Let's listen to two women introducing themselves to each other. Bonjour, je m'appelle Sophie. Je suis anglaise. Et toi? Bonjour, je m'appelle Marie. Je suis française. And now two men. Try to notice the difference. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Louis. Je suis anglais. Et vous? Bonsoir, Louis. Je m'appelle Thomas. Je suis français. Okay, introducing yourself is a great way to start a conversation with a new friend. But how can we keep it going? What other questions could we ask? Well, you could ask where your new friend lives or what kind of job they have. Yeah, perfect. And that's just what we'll talk about in our next lesson. So far, we've learned how to introduce ourselves in French by giving our name and where we're from. Right, let's hear it in a quick dialogue. Bonjour, je m'appelle Elsa. Enchantée Elsa, je m'appelle Louis. Je suis française, et vous? Je suis anglais. Now let's add to the conversation by learning how to talk about where you live. Imagine you meet someone who lives in Paris. They would say, J'habite à Paris. J'habite à Paris. I live in Paris. That's right. J'habite means I live. J'habite. J'habite. J'habite is actually two words. Je, which you already know, means I, and habite, which means live. In French, when one word ends in a vowel, like je, and the next word starts with a vowel, like habite, we sometimes contract the two words. So instead of je habite, we get J'habite. We saw this when we learned how to say my name is, je m'appelle. Right. Instead of me appelle, we say m'appelle, je m'appelle. By the way, habite technically starts with an H, but since the French H is silent, we treat it like a vowel. Habite. J'habite. That's right. And then to say I live in Paris, you'd simply add À Paris, at the end. J'habite à Paris. J'habite à Paris. Notice how the S at the end of Paris is silent again? Paris. Paris. J'habite à Paris. Let's practice. Repeat after me. Paris. J'habite J'habite à Paris. Super! When we say j'habite à Paris, the à means in. I live in Paris. So if someone lives in the lovely French town of Bordeaux, they'd say j'habite à Bordeaux. Or if they live in Berlin, they'd say, J'habite à Berlin. J'habite à Berlin. Berlin ends in I-N, which in French becomes un. Un. Another nasal sound. Berlin. Berlin. Bonjour, je m'appelle Marie. J'habite à Bordeaux. Enchanté, je m'appelle Thomas. J'habite à Berlin. Your turn. Repeat after me. Berlin. J'habite à Berlin. Génial. What else would you want a new friend to know about you? How about your job? 
We already know how to say I am. Je suis. Je suis, as in je suis français. If you were a professor, you'd simply say je suis professeur. Je suis professeur. 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 Je suis professeur. And if you're a journalist, you'd say je suis journaliste. Je suis journaliste. 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 Je suis journaliste. All right, let's practice. Repeat after me. Professeur. Journaliste. Je suis professeur. Je suis journaliste. Bon travail. Good job. Now let's put all this together for a nice long conversation in French. Good idea. We already know that and is a, as in et vous or et toi. So I could say, je suis française et je m'appelle Estelle. I'm French and my name is Estelle. And I could say, je m'appelle Paul et j'habite à Paris. My name is Paul and I live in Paris. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Je m'appelle Marie et je suis française. Enchantée, Marie. Je suis français et je m'appelle Marc. J'habite à Paris. Et toi J'habite à Bordeaux et je suis professeur. Ah Je suis journaliste. That was great. You're all set to use your French to make new friends. Yes. Now get out there, be delightful, and make people mean it when they tell you. Enchanté. Au revoir. À bientôt. We've just learned a few phrases to use when meeting someone for the first time. So, now we know how to introduce ourselves and how to say where we're from and what we do for a living. Just in case you forgot any of that, let's hear it in a conversation now. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Je m'appelle Marie et je suis française. Enchantée, Marie. Je suis français et je m'appelle Marc. J'habite à Paris. Et toi J'habite à Bordeaux et je suis professeur. Ah, je suis journaliste. Okay, time to get chatting. Let's pretend it's Saturday night and you just arrived at a party. You spot someone you've never met before. So you decide to walk over and introduce yourself. Since it's evening, say good evening to your new friend. Excellent. Bonsoir. The best way to get this conversation going. Well, you should probably get to know each other's names. Exactly. And to ask for someone's name in French, we can say, Comment tu t'appelles? We've already learned that comment means how, like in, Comment ça va? And just like je m'appelle means my name is, or I call myself, Comment tu t'appelles means how do you call yourself? Which is another way of saying, what's your name? Comment tu t'appelles? Okay, so go ahead and introduce yourself. When your new friend asks for your name, tell her, my name is Michel. Fantastique. Je m'appelle Michel. But don't forget to ask your new friend's name too. Yes, très important. This time, when she asks what your name is, say, My name is Michel. And you? Comment tu t'appelles? Bon travail. Je m'appelle Michel. Et toi? Now, when the woman tells you her name, say you're delighted to meet her. Je m'appelle Marie.
Okay, we'll turn off grading for now, but you can still follow along. Marie smiles and shakes your hand. Then she asks where you're from. Let's say you're from England. Try saying, I am English in French. Try saying, I am English in French. Parfait. It would also be good to tell Marie where you live. So say, I live in Paris in French. Parfait, j'habite à Paris. But remember to return the question. After the bell, say, I live in Paris. And you? Excellent. J'habite à Paris. Et toi? Then, Marie explains where she lives and what she does for work. Oh, j'habite à Bordeaux. Je suis journaliste. After she tells you a bit more about her job as a journalist, she asks what you do. Say, I am a professor in French. Fantastique. Je suis professeur. You continue to talk to Marie for a while and make plans to hang out again sometime. Congratulations, you've just made a new friend. And now you've learned some conversation starters in French, you're all set to make even more new friends. <laughs>